uh, I was thinking that I uh, I could have I could uh, cover all 1.2 up to 1.4, but uh, when I look at the slides and the topics to be discussed today, uh, I think I will try my best to at least complete 1.1 uh, and 1.2 uh, definition. And uh, 1.2 is importance and uh, uh, significance. Uh, in definition, uh, 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 one of the important definition is of uh, Arjurjani, uh, which is very important in um, whoever is teaching ethics. Uh, they always um, uh, look into the definition presented by um, uh, Arjurjani in his Kitabu Tarifat. Uh, so, uh, after looking at the technical uh, and the literal meaning, we are going to uh, shed some light on the definition of Arjurjani. Uh, and then we'll talk about um, uh, importance and significance uh, where we are going to talk about this preach, uh, the, uh, that ethics is the spirit of Islam. And also we'll talk about that ethics, uh, akhlaq, is the validation and authentication of iman. Uh, and uh, also we'll talk about the benefits, uh, spiritual benefits and social benefits of akhlaq uh, in Islam. Uh, so, uh, so these uh, subtopics uh, are coming under importance and uh, significance. Okay, so let's look at the definition of um, uh, ethics. Uh, we'll start with the ethics, which normally we are using today in English, the word uh, ethics. But in Islam, we are using the word, the term akhlaq. So we'll gradually move to the term akhlaq. But we'll start um, uh, first with the ethics. Uh, so the literal meaning of ethics, it is derived from the Greek word ethos, which means uh, character. Um, and technically, ethics is a discipline that looks into morality, or it is the values or rules of conduct held by individuals uh, or groups. Right? So it is a branch of science, uh, which is looking into morality. Uh, so ethics is actually name of a, of a science. It is a philosophy. Uh, in general, answer to the question, what is ethics? Uh, we can answer um, uh, at its simplest. Ethics is a system of uh, moral principles. They affect how people make decisions and lead their lives. Uh, it is concerned uh, with what is good for individuals and society and also described as moral philosophy. Um, it covers the following dilemmas, how to live a good life, uh, how our rights and responsibilities, uh, and then uh, the, what is right, the language of right and wrong, um, what is good and bad, so this science is looking into all these uh, things. Okay, so now coming to, uh, because we said, because uh, this is the, uh, one of the greatest uh, contribution of triple IT that um, uh, even though we, um, we talk about ethics, but we always have a, um, uh, uh, a footnote, a, a note that we are using the word ethics in the meaning of akhlaq, in the meaning of uh, uh, the Islamic um, uh, understanding. So ethics in Arabic, we are using it uh, in the meaning of uh, ilmul akhlaq, science that studies uh, morality. Um, so here we are dealing with two words here. Uh, one is uh, uh, khuluq, Akhlaq is plural of the word khuluk. Uh, and khuluk, it denotes uh, nature or innate disposition of human being. Uh, the, on the other side, the 
the word khalq so we have two words here eh? one is khuluq and another is uh, khalq um, the opposite so the khalq is referring to the physical body of the human being uh, whereas the khuluq is referring to the nature the innate disposition uh, of the human being uh, so this dua we uh, we read um, this is quite famous when especially uh, uh, our kids we are we teach them to read this dua when we are looking at the mirror allahumma kama hassanta khalqi fa hassin khuluqi so you can see here in this um, uh, uh, dua um, it is bulughul uh, maram uh, page 451 uh, and also normally it is uh, narrated by at tabarani uh, so in this dua and it is uh, narrated by uh, mother aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha um, so you can see here uh, this dua is in two parts uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is uh, supplicating uh, oh allah uh, like how you have made our appearance our outer body external body beautiful hassanta khalqi fa hassin khuluqi uh similarly make our inner self our innate our akhlaq make it beautiful like how it is beautiful outside so from this hadith we are also understanding that these two terms here uh, one is uh, khalq and another is khuluq so the word akhlaq is plural of khuluq not khalq right so that means akhlaq is always dealing with the inner state uh, of the soul uh, later you will see the, in the definition of um, uh, Georgiani uh, how he defines it. So it's quite very quiet. So I also feel li a little bit uh, awkward to as if like I'm talking to myself, but <laughs> it's okay uh, because if everyone will unmute, then it will be quite noisy. Uh, so we can see there we are now, alhamdulillah, uh, nearly 246 participants. Uh, that's great, alhamdulillah. Okay, so uh, we are on this, um, um, the two word, uh, one is khalq, one is khuluq. And the word akhlaq, which we are dealing with uh, in this subject, um, uh, ethics, uh, akhlaq, uh, is the plural of the word khuluq okay and not khalq uh, khalq is the word in arabic which is dealing with our uh, outer uh, appearance uh, our external body our physical body whereas uh, khuluq is uh, dealing with our inner self our uh, our innate our uh, natural uh, uh, disposition okay so let's go to uh, next part we are still on definition so uh, uh, Jurjani, uh, his famous book is uh, Kitabu Tarifat. Uh, and whenever we deal with uh, terminologies in, 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 uh, in academic uh, uh, writing or in academic lectures, um, it is considered an incomplete work if someone, a scholar, does not refer to Kitabu Tarifat. Uh, he's very important, right? So, um, Abdul Qahir uh, al Jurjani, and his book is Kitab al Tarifat. So, he says that uh, akhlaq is the deep state uh, of the soul, hayya rasikha, of the nafs, that produces uh, actions, behavior uh, with ease, with uh, sahula. Uh, uh, without resorting to sophisticated thinking, fikr, and reflection, rawiyah. Okay, so a action which is proceeding from our deep inner state of our soul, and that action is uh, proceeding with ease, without even thinking. 
that is what is called akhlaq and imam ghazali also defines it like that right so he says imam ghazali says that the uh, akhlaq is an established state of the soul from which actions proceed easily without any need for reflection or uh, deliberation right so that is the definition of uh, akhlaq uh, in islam so now there are some important points in uh, jurjani's uh, definition uh, i will be sharing this um, uh, this um, uh, slide is still under construction uh, but i am um, um, sharing though i am sharing it with you once it is complete inshallah we will we'll send you uh, one copy um, i will send the copy to uh, our sheikh shahran and then he will share it with all the uh, participants inshallah um, so it is still under construction i'll be still adding some more as we will go through this seven sessions inshallah uh, yeah, all right so okay so let's see some important points uh, in uh, uh, jurjani's definition uh, this is the those who uh, can read arabic uh, i have copied the definition uh, in arabic uh you can uh, read on your own uh, those who are referring to arabic and alhamdulillah who are capable to read uh, and uh, but for those who cannot read arabic don't worry um i am going to discuss some important points here uh, in this uh, definition of uh, jurjani okay so uh these are some important points here uh, in jurjani's definition if good actions and behavior that are in line with sharia and aqal uh, proceeds from the soul with eyes then that state of the soul uh, is called khuluqan hasanan uh, that uh, a good corrected person that this is the good character right so uh, so you can see first uh, um it is proceeding from that inner state uh, and it is uh, the action the behavior is proceeding with ease um, a person is not philosophizing uh, not uh, doing uh, in time of action he is not busy thinking and becoming a philosopher but without thinking that action proceeds from him uh, um, i will emphasize what does it mean huh? um then if actions and behavior so if the action which is uh, proceeding from the inner state of the soul if, if that action is praiseworthy it is in line with the sharia and of course anything which is in line with the sharia uh, will be also uh, rational all right um, something against sharia will not be illogical so a behavior which is uh, rational uh, it is according to the aql it looks right and also it is in line with the sharia and this type of action proceeding with ease uh, then this is if this happens then that state of the soul is called khuluq uh, hasan good character now on the opposite uh, if from the uh, from the soul if a action which is proceed uh, proceeding is uh, not according to sharia it is uh, dispraised uh, then in that case that state of the soul is called khuluqan sayyi'a sayyi'an bad character okay okay so jurjani is saying here that Uh, it should be established behavior okay and not a uh, ad hoc action okay so uh, what does it mean uh, especially people who are in psychology and people who are studying behavior uh, uh, this 
it is very important for them as well. This point is very important that um, that it is coming from that hayy a rasikha, a very uh, deep uh, uh, part of the st uh, our soul, and without thinking, uh, with A's. That means that behavior has become the habit. That behavior has become that part of that human being. And now that behavior can be good or it can be bad, uh, but it has become the part of that human being. Now, in example, uh, if he uh, If he, uh, for example, gives uh, 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 some donation, but this is only one time. So that means this is not established. So this is not part of his akhlaq yet. We cannot call him generous yet. Okay. So, so that means if someone is generous, his akhlaq is of generosity. That means that action of giving, the action, uh, the action of uh, spending on others has become part of him and he doesn't have to force himself. Now, even this uh, forcing and uh, thinking before doing is also, uh, there are some important points here. A person might be generous, but he doesn't give every time. There are some, some reason, uh, might be the time is not right. So he can still be a generous person uh, and he doesn't have to give every time. And on the other side, a person uh, who gives out of Riyadh, uh, showing people, that uh, he wants the praise of the people instead of uh, liking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This person uh, is not generous from his inner state. Right? So you can see uh, these are the, some important points here in Jurjani's uh, uh, definition uh, that um, uh, it should be established that action which is proceeding from him should be established in that person and of course that action have to be according to the sharia uh, in line with the sharia and uh, it should be empty it should be clean of riya uh, ri or showing uh, doing it without ikhlas right so so these are some of the important points in uh, jurjani's definition of uh, uh, of akhlaq uh, okay, let's go to the next point, um, uh, discussion, which is uh, importance and uh, significance. And here you can see there are three points which I mentioned earlier in the starting that um, uh, there are three discussions here which I want to cover. Uh, and that is all for today, inshallah, when we will, uh, I will finish these three points, sub points. Eh? Uh, we are talking, uh, we are going to discuss ethics uh, as the spirit of Islam. Uh, we are also going to talk about that uh, ethics, the akhlaq, it is the validation and authentication of Iman. And uh, it has the spiritual and social benefits. Because if someone is asking the question, uh, why do we need akhlaq? Why do we need uh, ethics? Uh, why, why we need a person to be moral, um, then uh, we need to know the benefits, uh, the spiritual benefit and the social benefit of uh, someone being uh, uh, someone who is having good character. Right? So, so these are the three points we'll discuss now, inshallah. Okay. So, first one. Akhlaq is the ruh. Uh, uh, 
uh, you can see here, we, if you see in the, we'll be coming up, uh, we'll be going through some hadith inshallah after this, and then you will see that how whenever people are asking about Islam uh, from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, and he is ask, uh, answering them with uh, good character, importance of good character, which will decide that someone is a mu'min, someone is a good Muslim. Uh, all right, so, uh, so you can see here, for example, um, first we'll go through this hadith, Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Innama bu'ithtu liutammima makarimal akhlaq. Okay, this is a Sahih Bukhari hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, I've been sent as the messenger of Allah only for the purpose of perfecting uh, good morals, uh, perfecting the akhlaq, okay, the good akhlaq. Uh, and then you can see there, uh, Prophet ﷺ is saying, Al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadihi. This is also another Bukhari hadith, okay? And then you can see here, uh, Prophet Wasallam is actually telling us in this hadith that Islam is all about uh, good character, uh, character which uh, is actually uh, not harmful uh, to the others. So you can see here, uh, a Muslim is the one who avoids harming uh, others uh, through his tongue, um, through his uh, uh, limbs, okay, through his actions, bodily actions, or through his words. Uh, so this is what I mean by that akhlaq is the spirit of uh, Islam. Okay, that it is, um, and then, is what is hap was happening in when we look at the uh, Makki ayat and the Prophet's life in Makkah. Uh, it is all about after Iman, uh, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is working on the character, on the akhlaq of the people in Makkah. So it is the very foundation uh, of Islam uh, to be mu'addab, to have good akhlaq, uh, to be ethical. Uh, so, um, so the, you can see here, even um, now I will discuss this, uh, but without sharing the slides, and then inshallah, once I will have uh, other slides added to this existing slide, then we'll share it with you. So, so you can see. Uh, I'm still discussing the spirit of Islam, eh? that akhlaq is the uh, spirit of Islam. Uh, so even when we look at the uh, ibadat, uh, they are also the ibadat, the outcome of the ibadat is also Akhlaq. For example, when we look at the uh, salat, aqimu um, sala, aqim is sala. Inna salata tanha anil fahsha wal munkar. So in this ayah, we can see establish regular prayer. For prayer restrains from indecent and evil behavior. So here we can see. Even we are ibadat is solely for Allah subhanahu wa taala, but there also the outcome is uh, is akhlaq. Uh, look at the verse of the zakat as uh, for example, right? So khud bin amwali amwali him sadaqa to tahir him to tahir him wa to zakki him biha that uh, by uh, giving zakat, we are purifying our soul, we are purifying our inner self. Um, and then when you look at the tafsir and other verses, um, 
uh, by giving zakat, uh, we are actually freeing ourselves from stinginess, which is a vile, which is a bad uh, character uh, in human being. So you can see here, even uh, while we are giving zakat, it is a uh, wajib, uh, which is um, compulsory, uh, and it is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the outcome is the, the akhlaq. Uh, fasting as well. We just finished our fasting and still, and we are still uh, going through the uh, shawwal. Alhamdulillah, many of us uh, are fasting the sixth of, of the shawwal. Um, so look at the verse uh, one surah al Baqarah one eight three here also. Ya ayol ladina amanu kutiba alikum siyam kama kutiba ala ladina min kablikum la alakum tattakun. Right, that uh, you may become righteous, uh, you may become a person of good character, a good behavior, rightful person, uh, fasting, hajj, uh, uh, surah Baqarah 197, uh, wala fusuka wala jidala fil hajj. Okay, so uh, they are also in hajj, with this what we are learning, that uh, lewdness, uh, depravity, abuse, anger, uh, all these we are supposed to control when we are in Hajj, to the extent that we also uh, cannot harm any plants when we are in Ahram, uh, any animals. Right? So, so they are here also we are learning the uh, akhlaq, the outcome is akhlaq. So that's what we mean by that akhlaq is the spirit, the ruh of Islam. So second uh, point was the uh, validation of Iman. Right, so Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, many of us we know this hadith and we always talk about this hadith. Al-Iman uh, ubid wa sab'una أو بضع وستون شعبة أفضلها لا إله إلا الله وأذناها إماتة الأذى عن الطريق okay. والحياة شعبة من الإيمان this is another Bukhari hadith uh, Iman um, the مفهوم of this hadith uh, Iman has over 60 uh, branches or 70 branches uh, the highest uh, of the branch of Iman is the belief that nothing deserves to be worshipped except uh, Allah. Uh, and the lowest uh, of which is the removal from the way, from the road way uh, of that which might cause harm to anyone. And modesty, haya, is branch of Iman as well. So you can see here, character is the behavior of human being. Uh, it is a part of our Iman. So that means, uh, Amanu is not enough. Uh, amilu have to be there as well. And that is why in the Quran, you will see every time, Inna ladina amanu wa amilu salihat. Uh, Iman, uh, who is believing in Allah, and believing in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but uh, how do we validate this iman, this belief? It has to be accompanied with our action, uh, good behavior. And so, so that is why uh, we are uh, talking about here that it is akhlaq is the validation uh, of iman. Morality is the validation of Iman. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ayatul munafiq Falatha Falathun Iza hadasa kadiba Wa iza wa'ada akhlafa Wa iza u'tumina khana Muttafaqun alayhi Now this is a hadith where Muslim and Bukhari they are agreeing but in the Sahih Muslim, he's adding some more, that there is some more word to this hadith. Wa in sama wa salla. 
wazama annahu muslim right? that uh, the munafiq the alama the sign of the munafiq is that when he uh, whenever he speaks he lies uh, whenever he promises uh, he breaks it and whenever something is entrusted to him uh, he betrays uh, and with this he might be praying and fasting thinking that he is a muslim so this is the the additional part in in sahih muslim right so so you can see here uh, prophet sallallahu is explaining to us telling us through this hadith that um, uh, we might be praying we might be fa we might be fasting but uh, we are not reaching that level of iman if our akhlaq our character uh, this lying uh, betraying uh, not fulfilling promises uh, all these are missing in a muslim's life uh, then uh, he is just a namesake muslim right so so that's why character akhlaq is very important because it is very natural automatic that when someone will believe in Allah, someone will believe in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then uh, uh, his behavior, his action, his inner self will will be purified, will become pure, and the actions proceeding from it will be pure as well. Uh, so uh, what we are saying here is that uh, lacking in uh, good morals is similar to lacking in faith in iman and there is a hadith in at tirmizi qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam akmalul mu'minina imanan ahsanuhum khuluqan this word coming again here khuluq eh? uh, what is the hadith here at tirmizi uh, that the most perfect believer in faith is the one who is best in moral character right so his akhlaq will be the best so you can see here prophet in this hadith is telling us giving us a very simple uh, equation here right that lacking in good moral uh, is equal to lacking in in faith and perfection in moral in in good moral morality is perfection in iman okay so uh, so that's what we are talking about here that morality is uh, the it is uh, akhlaq is the validation of uh, iman uh, uh, in sahih bukhari and this is very common we always talk about this hadith qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam la yu'minu ahadukum hatta yuhibbu li akhihi ma yuhibbu li nafsihi right so this is in sahih bukhari again um, he who believes in allah and the last day of judgment is forbidden to cause any harm to his neighbor okay uh, to his brother uh, he is supposed to be kind to the guests, uh, especially the musafir, the strangers, wayfarers, and uh, he is. Um, uh, so you can see here, la yu'minu ahadukum that one cannot be mu'min if he does not like, he does not love for his brother what he loves for himself now uh, who wishes bad for himself everyone in this world is always uh, opting always intending um, making effort for something good for themselves now the demand of our iman is that we also if we are intending we are wishing good for ourselves then the iman requires us that we wish 
that same goodness for our brother, for our sister, for our neighbor, for our society. Right? So if we don't like someone calling us bad names, uh, someone insulting us, then that means we should also uh, love this, that someone should not, or we should wish and we should make effort that someone does not insult our brother, our sister. Uh, all right, so someone doesn't curse us, that means we should also make effort that someone does not curse another Muslim or another brother. All right, so, so, so these are also another uh, for you to reflect on. Uh, I will be inshallah sending all this, uh, I'll be adding all these hadiths and explaining um, and the translation and the references uh, in the slides inshallah. And then I will share it with the uh, Sheikh Shahran and he will give it to you inshallah. Uh, so now look at the the Quran, which I mentioned earlier, that um, well, Asri we are always reading, right? Every time we we give talk, we uh, especially in Malaysia, uh, people are very concerned about time. Uh, of course, it never happens, uh, but we always talk about this. Uh, we end our session with Surah Al Asr. Inna al insana la fi khusr illa ladina amanu wa amilu salihat. Okay, so you can see there. Amanu wa amilu salihat. Okay, and, and then what is happening after that? I swear by the time, most surely Allah, uh, man is in loss, except those who believe and do good work, good actions. And watawasaw uh, bil uh, and exhort one another to truth. Watawasaw bil sabr and exhort one another to endurance. All right, so you can see here in this teaching that after Iman, these are all behavior. These are all morality that we are supposed to good, uh, do good actions. We are supposed to encourage, exhort one another to truth. We are supposed to exhort and encourage one another to endure. Uh, make sabr when something bad happens to us. We are now in COVID-19. Uh, this is part of akhlaq that we call our brothers. We contact them through WhatsApp, uh, call them through Viva and ask how are they doing? Uh, because many people uh, are uh, mentally not healthy in this situation. Do we call them or we are just uh, selfish sitting in our house and and, and spending time with our kids and children. Are we calling others? So you can see this is also behavior, akhlaq, character. Uh, Surah Baqarah verse 82, right? وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Who is going to be in Jannah? Who is going uh, to be their everlasting life in Jannah? Uh, the one who is believing faith and amilu salihat, walk righteousness. Okay. What is the time? We're still um, nearly about to be done. Inshallah, we'll finish uh, inshallah today with these points. Eh? Okay. Uh, why do we have to be moral people? Why uh, Muslims akhlaq should be good? So in that, I said that we have benefits, right? So we have spiritual benefits, we have social benefits. Uh, so look at some, uh, we'll talk about some spiritual benefits. Uh, and you will see that actually to be, uh, to, to force ourselves to, uh, to have good character, to practice, because you see good character, inshallah, it will be coming in our, our second session. Uh, we'll be talking about inculcation. How do we inculcate good character, good akhlaq in ourselves? So don't worry, it will come there. Uh, we'll talk about this. Um, all right. So, but here we're talking about the benefits. Uh, good akhlaq is actually our equivalent to nawafil. 
our supragatory uh, ibadah. So akhlaq is actually ibadah. That means if we are generous, we are giving, uh, we are spending infaq, we are sharing, we are giving hadiyah, we are fulfilling promise, we are not telling lies. All these are ibadah actually. Right? So, and, and you can understand this through the hadith. The hadith says, a believer by the virtue of his good morals may attain the status of one fast, voluntary fasting, regularly, and, and perform prayers at, at night. Right? So it is same like someone praying tahajjud, someone uh, fasting in shawwal, uh, someone fasting on the Ayyamul Bayda or fasting on Mondays and Thursdays. So someone having good akhlaq, like smiling is a good uh, character. This is similar to like someone fasting nawafil. Right? So uh, the hadith says when the Prophet ﷺ was asked, people asked him, uh, whom Allah likes the most among his subjects? And the Prophet replied, the one who possesses superior moral qualities. Right? The one who is full of good akhlaq, Allah loves him most. Now, still we are here on spiritual benefit. Now, there is a negative part of uh, if someone is not having um, good akhlaq, uh, he is actually in a loss. Uh, and um, because why? Because our bad behavior, it eliminates our good uh, deeds. Right? It spoils our virtues. Uh, and, and the traditional example, uh, uh, I think there are some people in, from Fiji today, I don't know, from my country as well. Um, uh, this example is very famous. Uh, what happens if one or two drop of urine uh, falls in a bucket of milk? That whole milk is spoiled. So a mu'min, a good Muslim, if his character is not good, this is what happens. It eliminates his good deeds. Right? So, and the Prophet ﷺ says this, that uh, um, courtesy and good morality melt the sins just like the water melts the eyes. Right? This is one part of the hadith. The second part of the hadith is saying an immorality spoils good deeds as vinegar spoils honey. Honey is very tasty. <laughs> I always eat honey from Fiji, even though I'm staying in Malaysia. All right. Don't ask me how I get my honey from Fiji. Uh, but if vinegar falls in honey, it's spoiled. So one might be uh, doing tahajjud, one might be spending on miskin, on masakin, uh, one might be um, making great efforts, but then he eliminates, he spoils this with bad character. And on the other side, the first part of the hadith is the positive part, is that when we have good akhlaq, uh, the Prophet said that it's melt the sins. That means if we have, have some minor sins, okay, sagair, and every time we have we do good character, we have good akhlaq, so this good akhlaq will melt, will eliminate those minor sins because major sins we have to make toba, right? This one we we all know this. <coughs> and the hadith is famous. Uh, a certain woman is famous for her voluntary prayers. Uh, fasting and charity, but she harms her neighbors. Uh, this was asked by the Prophet Muhammad uh, Then the Prophet said uh, she is in Jahannam. Another woman does not do much by way of voluntary prayers, doesn't have a lot of tahajju, doesn't have a lot of tilawa, and uh, doesn't have a lot of uh, prayer, fasting. Uh, but she gives uh, pieces of cheese in charity 
and she does not harm her neighbors. The Prophet said she is in paradise, she is in Jannah. You can see. So that's why uh, my uh, dear brothers, um, I want you to share it, um, the importance of uh, uh, I want you to share it with your families, with your neighbors, with friends. Uh, this is a good time because now we are um, uh, easy access. We can reach people through uh, phone, through SMS, through WhatsApp, through Viva and other social me uh, media means. So please uh, share. Right? Uh, these are very beneficial, not only for you, for me as well. Uh, so that was the spiritual benefit. Now let's uh, discuss social benefit. Uh, um, when we have good character, good akhlaq, what will happen? We will have stable, secure, and harmonious society. Right? Uh, and actually, we don't need uh, rocket science to achieve this. Right? Uh, stability, security, harmony is purely coming out of a man's character. And I can give you example. Uh, we have all these uh, fightings on Jumu'ah uh, for parking. Uh, and people in Australia, they know this. Every time they will spoil their whole uh, uh, Jumu'ah spirit because someone blocked someone's car, all right, and, and then they fight on it, and, and sometimes they end up do, uh, having fist fights. Um, where's the akhlaq? Right, so you can see that's why we are saying that the social benefit, uh, stability, security, harmony, is because of our good character. Uh, see, civilization. Uh, civilization is only about to what can be done. People in a civilization, they do their best to achieve what can be done. But a civilization, when it is married with akhlaq, then it becomes a civilization with a just end. That means a civilization which is performing what should be done, it is achieving what should be done, and it is avoiding what should not be done. That is the, and that is a, when we are teaching, uh, you will see, I think you are taking the class of Dr. Kabui, and he'll be discussing this soon, when we talk about knowledge and civilization, that our understanding, Islam's understanding of civilization is different. Our civilization, the peak, the uruj, and the fall, is all based on akhlaq, on character, not based on uh, means, not based on material. Right? So strong and peaceful family life. And, and, and I don't want to emphasize that. You all know that. There are many hadiths there. Prophet Sallallahu is saying, who is the best husband? The spouse. The one who is a man who is, if you want to measure, the hadith says that if you want to gauge someone's character, you see his behavior towards his wife. Right? So a peaceful family, strong, united family institution is also based on akhlaq, social benefit. No? Leadership, good leadership is based on akhlaq as well. A leader, uh, no, he doesn't have justice, he doesn't have amana. Uh, he doesn't have integrity. Uh, he cannot be a good leader. Right? Uh, building good reputation. Uh, the reason why people were uh, giving themselves, allowing themselves and coming to the Prophet is because Prophet ﷺ was having a perfect character. And because of that, uh, the great uh, Kuffar they all uh, gave in at, at the end. They all surrendered to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu because the Prophet's reputation was because of his akhlaq. Winning uh, hearts of people. 
is also because of character. And we have many stories how Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam visiting the, uh, the person, uh, Jews, Yahud, someone who was harming him, throwing fresh on him. And then when he finds that he is sick, he is going there for his iada. So you can see, and he's winning the hearts. Uh, all right. So, so these are some of the social benefits. So, so, um, um, so that's all for, for today's um, session. We have done the definition and we have looked into Georgiani's definition. We have talked about the, uh, the um, importance and significance where we talked about that akhlaq is the spirit of Islam. Uh, and why it is important. We also talk about the validation of Iman, because uh, akhlaq and good behavior is the validation of uh, uh, Iman. Uh, then we uh, talk, talked about why we have to be uh, moral, why we have to be good, corrected people. There we talked about uh, social benefit, we talked about uh, spiritual benefit. So, um, uh, Sheikh Shahran, that's all for today. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, we will not take any question for now. Uh, we will take it next week, inshallah, as an uh, production of the course. As Prof. Farid said, will be with us for another six weeks. We have plenty of time. Prof, any last word before we uh, disperse? Um, yes, but, uh, normally I think uh, I just want to. Uh, Normally, I say this to my students and, and uh, uh, see our Iman is in our conscience. Mafid Damir, sitting inside, deep in our heart, our Iman is there. But we need the Shahada, we need the witness that our Iman is there. All right? So that is the reason why we need actions. Good behavior, good action, amil, amila salihat. This is the witness, all right? It is the witness of our uh, iman, which is in our conscience. If that witness is not there, that means something is missing. Our iman is not that strong that it cannot uh, take the form of actions. All right. Now, good behavior, good akhlaq, good character, uh, when we achieve this, that's what it means that a Muslim is dynamic. And this is supposed to be discussed in uh, by Dr. Fatmir when he will talk about the characteristics of Islamic worldview. And you will see there that Islam is a dynamic religion because we believe in God, in Allah, who is dynamic. And because our uh, Allah, our Lord is dynamic, we also have to be dynamic. And dynamic means this, right? That the Iman is in our conscience and that Iman have to take the form of action. It have to inter interpret into action. So this action becomes the witness, the shahid uh, of our conviction. Uh, that's all, uh, Sheikh Shahran. Thank and you. We'll... Thank you so much. We will see again, uh, Prof. Farid, tomorrow night for a short while because he's also the head of research for the Kulia. So he will share with us tomorrow night uh, briefly about what other research we are doing. At the so okay. We'll see the brothers and sisters again tonight, another three hours. We have a very big guest, Professor Dr. Anis Ahmad. He is one of the co-founder of, of IT. He studied together, he studied under Prof. Faruqi. Uh, they are all close friends, close friends. Tonight is a very important session. We really hope the brothers and sisters can join us at 9 o'clock for a little time. Till then, we'll close our session with Tasbih Kifarad.